Glenn Montgomery, and I am the executive director of Vision Action Network. It is a nonprofit organization that brings people together across sectors in Washington County to collaboratively address critical issues. Just over two weeks ago, I was visiting family in Roseburg when I learned of the mass shootings in El Paso, Texas and Dayton, Ohio. And I couldn't help but think that a similar tragedy had unfolded about four years ago in Umpqua Community College, just a few miles from where I was sitting. It's times like these when we feel a sense of helplessness, of anger, of hopelessness, and perhaps fear. And we struggle to find a way to respond, yet each of us can play a role in addressing the violence we see erupting around us. And here in Washington County at this gathering this morning, as well as at 5 p.m. across the street at the plaza of the Hillsborough Civic Center, we are choosing to respond. We are taking a step in this direction. And in a moment, you'll hear from several community leaders, most of whom will introduce themselves in the interest of time. And they represent local government, law enforcement, faith, and people of color who are often targets of bigotry, hate, and violence. I am inspired by their willingness to step forward and to share their thoughts about how we in Washington County can express our solidarity with the people of El Paso and of Dayton and how we can stand together on the side of love. And so at this time, I would like to invite Washington County Chair Catherine Harrington to offer a few opening remarks. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here with us today. Glenn, thank you for organizing this and for inviting us to come today. In the face of the hateful rhetoric coming out of the White House and the racist policies that threaten our communities, and more recently, the mass shootings in El Paso and Dayton, now is the time for us to come together as a community that we are welcoming and heartfelt. So thank you to all of you for coming out this morning and standing with us. Before we begin, I would first like to acknowledge the indigenous people of our country, particularly the Kalapulia, Tualatin, and Yamhill tribes upon whose land we stand this morning. Native Americans have inhabited this land for more than 500 generations, but their populations were decimated by an influx of white settlers who brought disease and a government who took their land. The Native American community of Washington County has endured and overcome so much injustice, showing resilience and tenacity that would be greatly admired by their ancestors. While I cannot reverse the great harm that has been inflicted upon Native Americans, people of color or anyone else who is often labeled as other, I can join with my colleagues and friends as I do today to express my commitment to work for justice. We can all join together here in our Washington County, one that celebrates its diversity, welcomes immigrants and refugees, and serves all who live here. Thank you again for coming today. I would now like to invite Sheriff Pat Garrett to say a few words. Sheriff Garrett. Thank you, Chair Harrington. I add my thanks to all of you for being here today. A caring community supports one another during difficult times, and I believe that's our community. We're here today as a community to support each other and our brothers and sisters in El Paso and Dayton. And in support of them, we declare a complete rejection of bigotry, hate, 
and violence, and we embrace diversity, love, and harmony. And we do this to build safer, stronger, caring communities. Our county is the safest major urban county in Oregon, and this is due in large part to our community. The ways we are simply good neighbors, the manner in which civil society serves our community, the volunteers who help others in countless ways, and our eagerness to value and celebrate diversity. The most appalling element of the El Paso murders is the motivation behind them. The victims were killed because of the color of their skin. The suspect told law enforcement he was targeting Mexicans, and we have to face the horrible reality that this was an element in his, in his murders. And while crime statistics show that we live in a safe community, we must understand that not everyone feels safe. My discussions with diverse community leaders make clear that many feel vulnerable, and those feelings are real, grounded in lived experience. The murders in El Paso and Dayton only intensify those feelings of vulnerability. In response, we must stand together and battle against hate and bigotry. By celebrating our differences, by linking arms with all our communities of color and others who may feel vulnerable, like our LGBTQ plus community, we must face the reality that we have much to learn about each other be intentional about listening and learning how we can be better neighbors, better coworkers, better friends, better strangers, better law enforcement officers. And while we have work to do, we have been at work to be prepared for and prevent the kinds of tragedies that we're here today discussing. In Washington County, Law enforcement agencies regularly conduct active threat response training together with fire and our emergency medical responders. Our new training center serves us well to prepare for what we hope will never happen, but for which we have to be prepared. We provide training and advice to businesses, to schools, places of worship about how to prevent and unfortunately be prepared for an active threat incident. And while we in law enforcement have to be prepared for the unthinkable, we all work together to prevent it. Which is why the Vision Action Network is important to our community. Like they're doing today, they bring many different voices together at the same table to confront challenging issues, some issues that can divide, but those voices also provide a path forward for healing and a future together. Innovative programs like Washington County's Civic Leaders Project identify and support tomorrow's diverse leaders to serve in all manner of community leadership roles today. And we find examples of this in our wonderful cities across our county. These cohorts, these programs involve future leaders from our, from our Latinx community and our diverse communities across the spectrum. Regarding the group that was targeted in El Paso, the Mexican and greater Latinx community in Washington County has been an important, vibrant part of our county for many, many generations. And today they are a vital thread in the fabric of our diverse, integrated community. And our community is enriched and strengthened by the culture, the families, the ingenuity, and the values of our Latinx community. Finally, Building a strong, caring community means continuing this conversation. And I look forward to everyone who could make it tonight to, to join us at our community gathering across the street. On behalf of all who serve in public safety in Washington County, I express our condolences and great sorrow to the families who lost loved, loved ones and the horrific murders in El Paso and Dayton. My heart sank last week and I read the story about Antonio Vascos who after being married 22 years, became a widower as a result of the El Paso murders and having no family to invite to the memorial service, he invited the community and thousands showed up. That is a caring community. And I believe that is our community as well. And our community gives me hope for a promising future together. Juntos, gracias.
Hi, nice weather. At least there's no sun. My name is Talma Ahmed, and uh, I'm president currently of the Islamic Society of Greater Portland, which was founded since 1986. I also uh, is a founder of Bilal Mosque. I'm sure that you have heard about it. It's in Beaverton. Yet, uh, I am involved with, uh, after 9-11, with the FBI and Department of Justice. So when all this profiling that was done at the airport, then I need, we were getting a challenges from the FBI, so I decided I go to the academy and I learned so much about it. And since then, I'm involved with it. So 19, I came 51 years ago from the Philippines. I was in Chicago. The first shock I have, I had was the assassination of Robert Kennedy. It took me a while and then after some time, Martin Luther King was assassinated. I called my mother. I thought uh, America is beautiful like we were taught in the Philippines. America is a motherland. It was United States that liberated Philippines, so we call it motherland. I will look forward to it. But after these two assassination, I want to go back because I won't know who will be next that will be assassinated. But instead, I became activist and I joined group. The first one was Illinois Nurses Association and it never stopped until now. Because I feel like if there's no justice done wherever it is, there's no peace. Going back to El Paso and uh, Dayton, Ohio, this is the latest one. Now it keeps on going and going where it's going to end. I came back from Bosnia. I thought that Holocaust will be the last one in European genocide but I went myself and saw it in Srebrenica. This is, say, 75,000 that were shot in justly in two days. I couldn't pray. I just couldn't. My husband went, why don't you pray for them? You couldn't because you're just thinking of 16 years old to 35 were shot in two days, 75,000. There's no way. And now it's going on here. It might not be a lot, but one life it's more than Islamic belief is that if you have taken one life, you have taken the whole humanity. But what I'm going to tell the audience and the group is what are we going to do about it? What does Washington County going to do about it? Parkland did it with the youth. We needed them. I suggest everybody that's here since Glenn started with the Vision Action Network that we should form a coalition where get the students involved, like Parkland did, and work with the government outreach. Get all the churches, the priests, the mosque, the Jewish community, and have a coalition and do something. This is one thing that we can do. Get all the schools. When I was with Washington County, human rights, we went to every high school and listen, and they are the ones that can give us, let the youth start the coalition. And it has to be in Washington County. If Parkland did it, Washington County can do it. Get all the ethnic group. We have Somali, we have Afghan, we have Native Americans, Nai is very active. This is the uh, National American Youth Association. We have the Bosnian. We have now the latest one that we work with were the Rohingya. They are eliminated slowly. 600,000 is left out of 3,000. And Jeff Berkeley and Susan run wide and they work so hard. Four years, we were able to work through the United Nations that we declared it a genocide instead of other people considered it just human tragedy. Now, these are tragedy. The personal experience I had in Portland, I thought, I've been in Portland for 46 years. This is such a peaceful state. It's so beautiful. It is so beautiful. It's just like New Zealand. It has three. You have the glaciers, you have the lakes, the mountains, and you have the beach. So my husband said, if 
I'll be offered a job tomorrow, I'll take it. This is New Zealand. And then tragedy happened there. I am so envious when the mayor of New Zealand, Christchurch, within two weeks, she was able to pass gun laws. And then last Thursday, NPR interviewed a city council and asked, how did you do that 10,000 give up their guns? The spokesperson in the group in Christchurch said, we use our guns for recreation. We hunt. In spite of that, if the government asks us to do, we will turn it in. So what, what is it, a small little country like New Zealand, peaceful can do it. Why is it that United States of America, we couldn't? So we need, we need some bill, we need the youth, we need all the mayors. Washington County is, we have seven, I'm not sure, that seven mayors can collaborate with the van and help out and we have to form a coalition, introduce a certain bill and make it strong. Government outreach. The ethnicity. In Bilalmos, we have 35 ethnic groups, 35 languages. All those people are involved. Today, lastly, is the Mexicans, El Paso. And then we have Muslims in New Zealand. Now, who will be next? Now we will be now. The one that happened to us in the Muslim community that affected me was the death in the metro, the stabbing, when the two girls were attacked. You cry and cry because this is, this is really, you couldn't, this is where you find out how human being is. These three guys that help, this is, yes, it's good to man, but they sacrifice their life. That's the one that affected me the most personally in Oregon. But of course, other, when Bobby was assassinated and Martin Luther King, I was affected. Three of my children are in New York. Every now and then there's an attack going on. The Jewish community, they vandalize. So now what are we going to do about it? And who going to start? I suggest that our Sheriff Pat and uh, uh, Glenn can, you know, form a coalition involving, get representation from different high schools. We did that with Human Rights Council. We listened to them. They, have, they are the future. They are the ones that has to carry the banner for injustice and the violence that's going on in this country. We are going to leave. We are getting old. But someone, the youth, has to carry on what we have worked. So I suggest the Islamic community are willing to go into this coalition, but we have to work with the government. Like I said, the sheriff's office, all the mayors get involved from Tigard to Cornelius to Forest Grove and have, and then high schools. Please, please, let us, Glenn, I'm expecting that at least since she started this and uh, we might as well go and do something. Coming here is great, you know, we are all together, diversity, but we cannot stop just speaking. I'm speaking here, but what is going to what is going on? What's going to be done? We have to have an action. Thank you so much for coming, and thank you so much for listening. And I'll be here if the coalition get formed. And thank you, Glenn, for organizing this. Buenos dias. Good morning. Uh, I'm Metro Councilor Juan Carlos Gonzalez. I'm also a Mexican-American, Mexicano-Americano, son of immigrants. And this moment is hitting me a lot harder than I thought. Um, you know, I grieve for the people of Dayton and El Paso. And no one should have to endure the tragedy that they have during these past two weeks. The tragedy that only deepens the scar of gun violence in our country. And unfortunately, a tragedy that is becoming too commonplace in communities across America. In El Paso, we witnessed an attack fueled by an, by an anti-Latinx manifesto built on the resurgence of white supremacy inflamed by a president whose doctrine targets immigrants and refugees. Latinx people have been a part of Washington County for generations. Mi gente. They work, attend school, pray, and volunteer their time in this community 
they're our neighbors. But I want to be clear that our community has fought white supremacy for decades here in Oregon too. And our elders do not let us forget those tribulations of the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. And the people that have fought are here in this audience with us today. We remember this legacy and that is why we show up every day. You know, a few weeks ago, I stood with leaders from Washington, Multnomah, and Clackamas counties, the mayor of Portland, and Governor Brown to denounce proposed federal policies that would harm people from our community. Because our Oregon today believes in righting wrongs from the past and striving for justice for low-income communities and people of color. Amidst the thousands of responses in support of our message, a handful directed at me and others carried the ignorant and, re and racist rhetoric emboldened by our very own president. And we have to call it for what it is. This president's rhetoric puts us in danger, en un peligro. It puts me in danger, it puts us in danger, but still, we show up every day. Our community is resilient, our community is strong, and we are proud. We take care of each other, nos cuidamos. And I'm thankful for all who stand shoulder to shoulder with us in solidarity. There is much work, mucho trabajo to be done to counter the, ha the hate and acts of violencia that divide all of us. But we are resolved to do this work. We aren't going anywhere. No nos vamos a ningún lado. This is our home. And this is why we show up every day. A toda mi gente de Oregón que siente miedo, aunque no puedo hacerlo todo yo, ni nosotros aquí en esta audiencia, sí le hacemos esta promesa. Les aseguramos que peleamos, yo y todos mis colegas, para defender nuestros derechos a una vida con dignidad y prosperidad. Adelante, mi pueblo. Thank you. My name is Lori Larson Caesar, and I'm the newly elected Lutheran Bishop in the state of Oregon. I am learning my way around the office. I got keys two weeks ago. There's much I don't know, but there are some things I do know. And those things include the fact that solidarity matters, that showing up matters, that standing next to our brothers and sisters and non-binary siblings in times of danger matters. And so that's why I'm honored to be here representing the Lutheran Church, which has just recently voted to become nationally a sanctuary denomination. That's the, the first mainline denomination to do that, but the real tasks are ahead. Like Selma said, to make sure that what we communicate is more than words but actions of true solidarity and love and sisterhood and brotherhood. It's much easier not to name hard things, but there are many hard things to name. We live in a time of rampant racism and sexism and homophobia, racial hatred, a yearning for a white nation, manifestos that speak of white power, those things abound. And I'm not a member of a white power movement by any means, but I am more and more aware of the way that white privilege informs my every day. And so it's time for us, those of us who have been called white in this culture, to step back and listen and name the power that we have and then use it for the sake of courageous love. That is the calling before us. I have a good friend named Amelia who empowers me to stand here she walked across the border from Mexico with a two-year-old on her back and not enough water. And now that two-year-old is a mother, but she lives in undocumented fear. She and her daughter would be here if they could, but they avoid public gatherings like this because they know they live in danger. She helps me name the privilege that I have and get out of the safety of my comfort for the sake of love and for the sake of hope. And so when we hear of ice raids in Mississippi and we see children in tears, when we hear of the tragedies in El Paso and on the max here, it's time for us all to say, it is time for a new day. It is a time for courage. It is a time for love. And it is a time for more than words. 
We need to reach beyond our privilege and relative comfort to give back to our communities. We need to channel our rage. We need to join together and speak to a president who needs to hear and be pushed back against in almost every way. And this is personal for me as a Lutheran, the shootings at Mother Emanuel Church, remember that, in 2015. We lost nine faith leaders in South Carolina, and the shooter was a white nationalist, a white supremacist, part of the white power movement, but he was also a young man raised in a Lutheran church. So it's time for all of us to say, where have we failed and where can we act? And so I'm thrilled, thrilled and privileged to be a part of this movement. And I want you all to challenge me to do more than just speak, but to put my words into action and be more courageous than I think I can be. Because if there's anything that faith stands for, it's that. My prayer is that together we can act that we can see with our eyes their despair in El Paso and respond with hearts and hands and courageous love. This new bishop pledges her heart and her life to this work, and I hope you will join me. Thank you. Aren't we tired of these events? But like you, I never tire of coming together as a community. I want to thank Sheriff Garrett, Ms. Salma Ahmed, Metro Councilor Gonzalez, and Bishop Kazar for sharing their thoughts with us today. I am impressed by their words and by their dedication to this community. And while the sentiments here today are important, as the Bishop mentioned, they fall short without actions to support them. Here's what we know. No community is immune from bigotry. No community is immune from hatred. And as we just saw recently, no community is immune from the horrific hate-filled violence witnessed in Ohio and Texas. But here is what we also know. Communities coming together. Communities taking action together. This is what makes us better and stronger. This year, I've worked with my colleagues on the Board of Commissioners here in Washington County to issue the first ever Pride Proclamation to make sure that our LGBTQ employees, neighbors, friends, and family know that we've got their backs. Not too long ago, I was pleased to push forward a resolution decrying the Trump administration's efforts to use federal housing subsidies as yet another way to separate migrant families. And throughout our county, we're working to develop our first equity policy that will make a bold statement about what we stand for. We will make sure that everyone feels welcome. I don't want a single mother in our county to stop coming to WIC because they fear being reported to ICE. I don't want to hear about any more victims of domestic violence not seeking help because of their immigrant status. Washington County is the most diverse county in our state. This is our most important identity. I will continue to work as your chair and to work with my colleagues and our amazing dedicated staff to make sure we have policies in place so that we can continue to serve all, all of our neighbors the best way we can, the best way we know how, caring, loving, welcoming to all. Tonight, there will be a public gathering planned for five o'clock right across the street 
at Civic Center Plaza. I invite all residents to join us as a community, a community in solidarity with the people of El Paso and Dayton, but also to remind ourselves of the diversity of our community, which I believe makes us stronger and more resilient in our Washington County. Thank you to Mayor Calloway and other community leaders who will be at the plaza this evening to offer comments starting at 5.30 p.m. They will be joined by some of our community-based organizations and our brave first responders who are committed to supporting and protecting all residents of Washington County. This concludes the formal portion of our gathering today. Our speakers and other leaders will remain a short while to field any questions that you may have. I wanna thank you very much for joining us today. You are our community. Thank you for standing with us to ensure that we are a better, stronger community each and every day in the county that I love. Thank you for being part of the solution. Good day.